Welcome back. You're listening to the Neighbor Ladies. It's episode, what is this, episode 14 already? Yeah. God, hold the night. Wow. Time flies. The time flies. We're here uh, with handyman Grant, Karen, Jay, Suzanne, Boston, and me, Colleen, here on the Alive and Social Network. Don't forget, check us out on aliveandsocial.com. Tell your friends about the Neighbor Ladies and, uh, and share, 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 share. And we'll do our best to keep you entertained. Um, hey, Suzanne. Yeah. You wanted to talk about something. I wanted to talk about, will the Rolling Stones ever retire? Do you think? <laughs> Why'd you want to talk about this? Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I missed, <laughs> I, I really didn't want to talk about it. I just sort of threw it out there. But then, but then, you know, then I started thinking about it and I started thinking, I really wish I would have been to their concert in June. Oh, that last one? Oh, yeah. yeah. I hope they don't. I hope they don't. I hope they keep going forever and ever and ever. Well, you know, here here's the deal that I thought was really interesting. This little fact that I I looked up: the average age of the four living members of the Rolling Stones is about two years older than the nine justices of the U.S. Supreme Court. (laughs) And they probably have better decision making capabilities. Right. Right. (laughs) Well, okay. So, like Dick Dale, the surf guitar, right? Yeah. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's still touring. He's got. I think I'd have to look it up now. I'm. I know he's got some chronic condition. Might be cancer, might be another right. something or other. And he has to tour right now. Yeah. And because he has no insurance. Or oh, I, my God. Um, oh, wow. Wow. Uh, I'm going to have to look it up because I know I'm, I'm paraphrasing and I'm not sure. Da, 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 da. Um, Dick Dale is in rough shape, but he keeps touring so that he can afford his treatment. 78-year-old surf rock legend Dick Dale is in rough shape. He's had rectal cancer twice, has had parts of his stomach and intestines removed, and he just, and he's badass. He's a total badass. He, um, and he just keeps touring because he's got to be able to afford, um, he's, uh, he's got to be able to afford his treatment. Well, that's not the case so, with uh, Jagger. His well, no, net, and how his does... net worth is $360 million. Does, Why doesn't he help him out? Yeah, really. Why doesn't who help him out? Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Why doesn't he help out his band? About, oh, no, it's not his band. This is not his band oh. member. This is another guy, another oh. old old oh, fellow. Okay. That, uh, But he's... Um, I'm trying to think of the songs that you might have heard. Um, but uh, you know surf guitar, right? Mm-hmm. That that sound, yes, that right, sound. Yeah. Dick Dale. Yeah. He did a yeah. lot of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, how did he lose all his money? Well, I think uh, he, he he might have had poor management, yeah. right. like a lot of those guys right. did. You Look know? at Doris Day. What happened with Doris Day? Oh, she TLC. lost all her money. TLC. They got the shaft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he might have had poor management. <laughs> Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah. So he just keeps going, and he says, "I." Uh, I can't stop touring, Dale says, because I will die, physically and literally. Um, I have to raise $3,000 every month to pay for the medical supplies. I need to stay alive, and that's on top of the insurance I pay for. I'd love to stay home and build ships in a bottle and spend time with my wife in Hawaii, but I have to perform to save my life. Um, I've been living like this for 15 years, but I'm still here and opening my eyes every morning. Um, So... He says, someone has to help me up on stage because I can't get up there alone. It's part of my show. There's part of my show where I play the drums, and my drummer pulls my arm, uh, and my roadie pushes my butt to get me up there. But I get up there. Um, Beyond the financial reasons, which he says admittedly are a big part of it, um, he performs to show a display of strength for others suffering from health problems. So, I mean, part of it is he's got a he's got to make that money. Otherwise, yeah. you know, and I'm sure he's got, um, people that are depending on him financially right. too. Right. So, yeah. so probably maybe he's just trying to get but enough money. But what's his wife doing in Hawaii? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> She's yeah. like, oh, I'd like to go shopping. Yeah, yes. uh, um, why isn't she helping him? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe she is, or maybe she's got issues too. Could, who Could be, yeah. knows? Yeah. But, uh, so I hope they never retire. I, I hope, hope the they Rolling don't Stones either. But you retire. know, many many years ago, because you know Mick Jagger's seventy two, and before he was forty five, he said that he never wanted to be singing "Satisfaction" at forty five years old. Right, because right. that's so old. <laughs> yeah, he's a fossil. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. 45 it's, is, you know, you're a fossil. There's just no two ways about it. Well, but I heard that the, uh, they were incredible in June here. No, I'm just kidding. I think he's great. I mean, yeah. you know, if yeah. you get over the fact that, you know, maybe he needs a facelift, but he won't do it. Right. But I mean, he's still gorgeous in those jeans. Come well, on. Well, and yeah. he's kept Keith Richards alive all these, yeah. all these years, you know. Here's a deep, dark family secret. Keith Richards is my stepmother's second cousin. But he doesn't. He never talked to the family after he became famous. Really? Legend. I always tease her about it. Can't you get me into the Rolling Stones? In June, I was all over. Don't you want to connect with a family member? Get us in. Yeah. You know. Anyways, I, I went down that road. But is I, that I where you get your eyeliner? Retire. Oh yeah, you know that it. rock and you roll know, eyeliner. Rock and roll. I wanted to be a rock and roller, but if you heard me sing, so did I when I was a kid. I oh, did yeah. too. Yeah. When I sang in the shower, I thought, for God's sakes, get me a band. It's, it's the best thing, you know. I was in a band. That, I am so not surprised. This is amazing. No, I'm not surprised either. We could do it again. The neighbor. What was the name band? of the band? Yeah. TNT. <laughs> we sang TNT from uh, we had we, it was all covers. We sang "Living After Midnight" by Judas Priest. <laughs> um, Living after midnight, <laughs> rocking till the dawn. I want to get the band back together. Um, Maybe on one of these episodes, Colleen. I'm I'm kind of a. I'm a good rock and roll singer. I bet I you really are. Yeah. And, and spandex is back. Yeah, I'm wearing it right now. These <laughs> jeans, you can't buy a pair of jeans without spandex. <laughs> I'm trying, Isn't I'm that trying true? to picture I know you jeans. Can't. They're like yeah. leggings. Yeah. It's like all jeans are yeah, leggings now. They are. I've just, I've given it yeah. up. Right. Um, Jeggings. Yeah, yeah, pajama jeans. I just bought mm -hmm. skinny jeans uh, it, on clearance at Kohl's. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, relaxed fit skinny jeans. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> My Jennifer, butt is sagging. Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> I felt relaxed. I was relaxed. I thought I was so hot, you know. And I showed them to my family, and my my daughter says, "Really, don't leave the house with those. You are those are pajama jeans, aren't they, Ma?" <laughs> Jennifer Lopez, relaxed fit. <laughs> relaxed fit. <laughs> my God, you could barely get it on the tag that was on the pants, and so much, you know. Well, well, no way. No, it's it, are they loose or are they tight? They're tight at the ankle. The rest is bagging. You know? Oh, really? God, oh, my. I felt so thin in the pants, you know. So the rest of it's all. Colleen, all... you could go pinch my butt. You'd never find it. You know? It's a great thing. God, I couldn't believe it. I they were it... six bucks, mind you, down from 80 because they I'm were sure. They were six dollars? Six bucks. I, it was worth it. It really was. But anyways, I, I was always... In middle school, okay, I was fascinated with the stones because I had discovered that guys look good in jeans. So, I mean, they, they were not a bad-looking band. And then my dad says to me, they're my age. Immediate turnoff. Immediate turnoff. If you are a 12-year-old and your father says, yeah. those rock and rollers are my age, for God's sakes, pick on someone your own age. You know, okay, yeah. David Cassidy and the Partridge family, thank you. See, I always like the Beatles more than the stones. That was the thing. You had to choose, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There was a certain generational yeah. thing, and you had to, were yeah. you a Beatles person or a Stones person? Right, yeah. right. I was right. so excited because, again, my life in middle school, you know, I didn't talk much. They picked us in choir to sing a Beatles number, at, you know, and they gave us, um, God, it was some Beatles tune on the flip side, you know, of, um, I can't even think of it now. I'm having one of those brain things that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, where yeah. you can't remember brain crap. Yeah. It happens when you turn 36. Rocky Raccoon. Oh, that was okay. the song right. they had us sing. And, and they, they made me song. wear a, they made me wear like a, uh, a maxi dress, a maxi <laughs> peasant dress. And mind you, I had nothing upstairs, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, flat. And, um, and I had to play the, the gut bucket. They gave me an instrument, you know, an old wash basin flipped upside down with a with a rope and a pole. True story. I think there's pictures. Enough of me. That's though. a Let's hillbilly. Go back to this uh, it was like instrument. a hillbilly thing. And Rocky Raccoon of all the heavy rock Rocky, and roll songs. Raccoon. Mm -hmm. Who's came your favorite back to Stones? His room. Oh, wow, Mick. Charlie yeah. Watts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, Charlie Watts yeah. is hot. He's, yeah. He is hot. You know, yeah. I I would uh, I take any of them. Okay. Yeah. Notice no one says Bill Wyman, the guy that the guy that married oh, yeah, a 13-year-old girl. Yes. Yeah. No one says Bill Wyman. No, no one says. He Bill had Wyman. issues. He was troubled. Yes. 
Yeah, I wonder if the, oh no, they divorced immediately. They divorced when she was like sixteen or something. His like parents that. came home. Her parents came home. It was over. Yeah, yikes. Well, I hope they never do. I I think yeah, retirement I to a certain degree is uh is, is a bad idea. <clears throat> and if you're doing something you love, yeah. then it's not like work, right? Yeah. Why right. would you retire? You got to get up right. in the morning. You got to do stuff. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because what else? You're gonna you're gonna just sit there and do watch you think, TV. Do you think Mick Jagger's really five ten? No, I think he's no five six. No. Five six on a good day. I think he's, he's like five four. Yeah, he's shorter he's than got me. Yeah. He's got lifts in his shoes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I yeah. think back to back, he and Prince would be interesting. Yeah. And Prince I think might Tom be Cruise taller. too. Tom Cruise oh, yeah. is a little guy as well. Oh, yeah. we can't talk about him. He makes me sick. But that's okay. Thank that's you. fine. Me no, too. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Another episode. Sorry about that, girls. No, that's Tom okay. Cruise makes you sick. Oh yeah, I can't. I can't explain it. Because of the Scientology thing. I don't like him because he's got one tooth that comes right out the middle. <laughs> yeah, he won't fix it. The tooth bothers me. I'm a dental yeah, freak. No, seriously. <gasps> yeah. Seriously, he has. It comes right out the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Look at a picture of him. Yeah. And uh, like I was staring at it one time. I was kind of high. I was like, God. <laughs> I hope I don't come back as no. Yeah. I was like, I was His like, tooth. It's like, it's like, it's like, oh, it's right out in the middle, like, oh. <laughs> got a little piece of corn cut in there. Yeah. Why doesn't he get a? Fix? He doesn't have two front teeth. He has God. one front tooth. Because I yeah. don't think he's worried about it too much. He's had a pretty good it's, life. Why can't he date people his own age? Never mind. Tom we don't Cruise? have time. Yeah. yeah. Why can't he, why can't he date men? Well, yeah, I well, think he should. Well, there you go. He would be I, a lot less creepy yeah. if he was just a man. I think yeah. he does date men. I, I think, think he that's does a whole, too. I just don't think yeah. he, he dates men to own too. It. Oh, I think so. I yeah. think that, oh, that he, everything else is a cover up. Yeah, because he can't get honest. But what, okay, so it's that Scientology thing, right? Mm -hmm. So why is uh for me John Travolta is a lot less scary? Yes, but I think they've got the same thing going on. Right. I think they've got the hidden homosexuality. Oh yeah, via Scientology. Big but time. for some reason, John Travolta does not seem terrifying to me. But no. Tom Cruise does. I'm right with you, and I cannot explain it. I've always loved John Travolta. I just don't trust Tom Cruise. There's <laughs> something creepy yeah. about him. Yeah. It's that tooth. It's the tooth. <laughs> it's that tooth. It's the one it's, front tooth. <laughs> I've been upset since Risky Business. I can't explain it. That's when I first noticed it, and then I looked at pictures. And I can't believe no one else sees it but I'm, me. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah, you're going to have yeah. to yeah, Google I've Tom never Cruise. Seen it either. You know, Tom Cruise was really good in uh, Interview with a Vampire, though. I will say. Because he was playing a monster. Yeah, yeah that's how I guess. <laughs> I love <laughs> that movie. Yes. yes. Yeah. That, I yeah. have to. Okay. I, yeah. He was he good in He was that. pretty amazing yeah. as Lestat. Yeah. 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 He was. Yeah. Let's, let's take a break. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, you know what's coming up here? It's Wednesday night here, uh, but soon it's going to be Foodie Friday. The father-daughter team of BT and Lydia Turner demystify the word foodie for the sake of good food and drink right here in the Twin Cities. Each week, heavy hitters of the service industry open up and discuss the vast and diverse food, wine, and cocktail scene right here in the Twin Cities. So check it out. Visit AliveAndSocial.com. Listen and subscribe. Foodie Friday. Check it out. Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Karen J., what do you plan to do in retirement? Travel. Travel? Yep. Whereabouts? What's your favorite? What's the first destination? In retirement? I don't know. I, I want to travel the world. Travel the world, the yeah. whole thing? Yep. Awesome. How about you, Suzanne? I, I also, you know, I piggyback on that. It's, uh, I, you know, you're not tied to a job. You're not tied to one place. You can experience other cultures, and that's what I'd like to do, and only about 12% of us do it. Boston? Okay, pretty much the same. I, You know, not to just co be a copycat, but I want to travel, and I want to keep writing and doing a little comedy and hanging with the family, you know? Awesome. Oh, yeah, those things, too. <laughs> what am I going to do in retirement? I'm going to be a stripper. Yes. And uh, it's something that I, I, if I would have had enough guts when I was younger, I would have done it, but I was always too afraid. But I figure by the time, I, I have a goal. I want to be a 70-year-old stripper. Cool. And I want to be. You could do the, it. I think I can. And I want to be the last act of the night, right when the lights get turned on. 
Wow. And I think in my little community, it's going to be like, here she comes. Oh, it's, and I think they're going to love me. It's going to be like, oh, let's, and they think they're going to give me a lot. Of, did you make it all night? You're like, Hurricane Colleen's coming out. That's going to be my name, <laughs> Hurricane Colleen. <laughs> and then and I'm she's going to, and I'm going to, it'll be one of those old timey, da 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 and it's going to be an old, old-timey. I'm going to have tassels and everything. What about this song right now? The Neighbor Ladies? Yeah, it could be. That It might work, the Neighbor Lady theme song. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be, and I'm only going to work for that one five minutes, but it's going to be, I'm going to make a shit ton of money in five minutes. Go down to Florida in those like communities where everybody retires in and plays golf. I might do it right here in Minnesota. Everybody might just, <laughs> Did you know I don't have anything to the well, lar- with the climate change, we could be Florida. Radio yeah. personality. Yeah. The, the largest <laughs> amount of STDs that are spread in the country are in those communities, down in those retirement communities in Florida. There's like a garage door policy. You leave your garage door halfway up, you're oh, good yeah. to go. It's ser- I'm serious. Like yeah. These co- yeah, they're these com- known for gonorrhea. These communities down in Florida. That's they're because just- this is like they st- it was all the stuff that happened, right? They- this is the people that didn't have to worry about that shit. And so they think they're immune exactly. when they were exactly, teenagers. Yeah. So yeah. they think they're immune, so they don't pay any attention right. to it. Yeah. Right. Not my generation. can't get it now. They're over hey, 60. check out the tooth. You guys see that? Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. They're, I'm, they're looking at a picture of Tom oh Cruise. God, it is right down his schnoz. It's right down the middle. The middle. <gasps> it's right it down the middle. It lines up with the beak. It You'll does. never oh. be able to and unsee it, it again. it is a beak, people. Let's not yeah, he call has it beak. anything else. He's <laughs> got a beak. He looks way different now. He does. He does. Yep. He's had plastic surgery. God, that look. He's puffy, for God's sake. <laughs> He's puffy. He's puffy. It's the one tooth. It's that one. Yeah. Laughing all the way to the bank there. <laughs> Mission Impossible. <laughs> Tom Cruise removes tooth. Yep. Whew, welcome back. You're listening to the neighbor ladies. What are we talking about? I don't know. Uh, we're talking about baby boomers, millennials, Gen Xers with uh, Karen J. Okay. Why do you want to talk about this? I don't know. I kind of didn't. I mean, I just was throwing it out there. <laughs> no, that's a good idea. You throw out topics that you're thinking about. Yeah. Now, we were talking about a generational thing, right? Uh, the generation of uh, uh, people that are in Florida now that mm-hmm. they have a, a high instance of uh, sexually transmitted infections. That's because those are uh, the early boomers because they came of age sexually where you didn't really, the, the worst thing they had to worry about was pregnancy. And that was really taken care of because they could get birth control pills, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So they're not thinking, you know, they sort of, they're, they're frozen in time in that, in that era. And they're not concerned about. Bacteria grows in humidity though. <laughs> Florida. That's so true. Florida. That's true. Everything is. All yeah. right. So I have a joke about baby boomers, Gen Xers, and millennials. Oh, let's hear it. Okay. Right, okay. It's not funny, though, because I just wrote it. You just wrote it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, neat. So it's like you're not funny yet. <laughs> it's spontaneous. Okay. So a baby boomer, a Gen Xer, and a millennial walk into a bar. The baby boomer says, what do you have on tap? The Gen Xer says, are you on Foursquare? And the millennial says, you guys accept Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> you know the thing that you like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think it's Cute. interesting because. <laughs> oh Lord, that's <laughs> someone definitely played with that yeah. picture. Yeah, okay. It's interesting because, like, okay, so my ex-husband, he was a baby boomer, and then I'm a Gen Xer, and then our kids are millennials. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like we don't usually think that like age difference. Age makes a difference, but it kind of does, and like how yes. we see the world and how we view yeah. a lot of different things. You, you don't have the same musical and, history. Yeah. No, when you think of um, combining families, and, and and when you have somebody like yourself who's married a baby boomer, and you think that when you get married, you take all that that person brings all his stuff anyways into the marriage. Yeah. And right. then on top of it, you need to consider, okay, he's from that generation. This is what this also means, you know? Right. Yeah. He and when w- you're like when you're young, it's like it doesn't matter so much but then it's like it does at one point yeah it yeah. just hits you like whoa we have nothing in common right you know right yeah you have to start well i will basics. say for baby boomers i mean as gen xers we were just a wash in baby boomer culture and we were expected to yeah. know everything about their cultural touchstones in a way that they were not expected to 
I mean, just think about how long their music hung around. Yeah. Throughout yeah. throughout my high school. Yeah. You know, until I feel like we didn't even get our own until the the nineties, and that was late in the game. Um, you know, in the in the early nineties, that's when when Gen X music really started coming to the forefront. But until then, I mean, the baby boomers just hung on for dear life, you know? Yeah. And, um, and music started getting interesting again, but you know, I mean, and uh, all, all props to Phil Collins, uh, yeah. And, and Genesis and all those guys. But right. I mean, t- you know, there was some pretty boring ass baby boomer generated music in the late eighties and they just wouldn't give it up. You know what I mean? They were just, you, you know, there's so many of them. And just en masse, they were so influential with everything. They right. just wouldn't. And that's why those uh, those movies that um, Breakfast Club, uh, yeah. 16 I Candles. I love those what, Who's the yeah. guy that made those? John just, Hughes. John yeah, Hughes. John that's Hughes. why his work was so great and so wonderful because it was it was really highlighting gen xers for the first time and it's funny because millennials love those movies now they right. love them they have yeah. parties with so them. do baby like boomers yeah well baby yeah. boomers love yeah. love them too everybody loves yeah. those movies but you know and it, even john hughes would say well baby boomers aren't aren't relinquishing the world the world stage to the gen xers they're not giving it they're, yeah. they're they're they want to hold on to their youth and their influence and so tightly that you know, they're not allowing the, the next generation to, to go forth and make their mistakes or say the things that they want to say and, and, mm. and have influence. And so, and I think that that, that really happened. And, and it's, it's a numbers game too. I mean, there's just so many baby boomers versus Gen Xers, but now the millennials are huge too. There's so many yeah. of them because they're the children of the baby boomers. So, you know, all right. of those. And the Gen Xers. Well, yeah. some, some of them, I mean, you and I had babies kind of early. I mean, I've got a millennial but I was, uh, you know, I've got a 27 year old daughter. She's a and a 24 year old son, and mm-hmm. I'm a Gen Xer. But I mean, mostly, you know, when I'd go to parent teacher stuff, you know, we're talking the parents are 10, you know, 15 years older than me. That's mm-hmm. that brings them into mm-hmm. baby boomer territory, right. right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's I think it's more um, commonplace for a millennial to have a baby boomer parent than it is to have a Gen X parent. Really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think it is too. Baby boomers. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't that old when I had my kids. I mean, I mean, I wasn't. I was like twenty-five. Yeah, it, it, but it's kind of there's kind of a lost group of people that, like, I age-wise, I don't really fall into the baby boomer thing. I'm, I miss it by allegedly three or four years. However, however, all of us in that age group waited to have kids. And when we had, I, we had our kids, you know, late thirties, that was considered old. Okay. Mm -hmm. By today's standards, no, people are having kids in their late forties, you know, and that's, that's, uh, then you definitely have a generation deal going on. And I know with my kids that, you know, that it's lots of different things from when people have a problem with, uh, millennials and I, I really don't, I don't either. What's the, what's the problem with it? I I don't get, I don't understand. They think they're lazy. I think yeah. they're being handed. Don't you remember when they thought we were lazy? Oh, yeah. right. Slackers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're slackers. Yeah. Right. We right. were slackers. Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, I, uh, Generation Y, that's what yep. you, why yeah. should I get a job? Why should I get a car? <laughs> why should I do this? Why should I do that? I don't see that at all. Nope. I see these kids trying to find a job anywhere they can. Mm-hmm. I see them going back to live with their mom and dad because they can't afford their student loan payments. Yeah, you know, and because the ones, the ones I know are like activists, and they're like, yeah. re- they're ready to change the world. Yeah, right. So, so I, I don't, I don't really know. have any problem with that. I think they're they're going to f- be forced to be the next greatest generation, uh, because of this uh, this war, which will not end. Right. And I think they're going to have to end it. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to end it. Yeah. This mess, and I think they're going to have to. It's going to be on them. So, like, and what's the greatest thing think... that Gen Xers did? Do you think? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I can't point to anything. Because maybe, like my, maybe my kids... by taking music back for a, a short time before it, it got digitized all over again. Do yeah. You, do you think you know? Gen Xers are done doing what they need to do? And and do you, I don't know, I, but I, I like, feel like I feel generation. like we should have done something profound by now. I, the I think they started era, the slow. The dot com era was a lot right. of Gen You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Xers. You're right. That's right. That's right. Huge, That's right. Huge well, and we did do that. Baby boomers had you know had Steve Jobs and you yes. know right. and, yeah. 
and ecologically speaking, I think we were the first That's people true. to give a shit about the environment, the environment. really making stuff yes. happen. Yep. For for the good. Um, um, Barack Obama is a Gen Xer. So is Jennifer Lopez. The one who you bought her, her pair of jeans. Her relaxed fit. Um, relaxed fit, skinny jeans. Bill, Cl- <laughs> Bill Clinton and Meryl Streep are baby boomers. Okay, the average age of baby boomers is if you're born between 1946 and 64. Right. Okay, so that, yeah, that, that puts me in there. So you are, what are you? Yeah, are you a baby I, boomer I'm a too? baby boomer. Yeah. Yeah. My dad so, was born in 47, yeah. so I'm a 30-year-old born from a baby boomer. Okay. Are you, and yeah. you're a millennial, right? Millennial? Yeah, would just well, at the, yeah, yeah, kind of at the end of well, it. What year right. were you born? 84. I'm kind of... No, then you're a Gen Xer. I'm a Gen, Gen Xer, Like yeah. I'm at that, right at that middle of it, right. but... But don't you guys feel that each of those groups, I mean, with the longevity that people are having today, that there's still stuff yet to achieve for Gen Xers and baby boomers? There's Absolutely. still things that oh, yeah. sure. happen. And I, I know it's an old, you know, I mean, I, I remember growing up and thinking that, oh, somebody that, that was 55 or 60 was close to dead, <laughs> you know. And now I think about it and think, God, uh, uh, we've just begun. Thank you. Baby you boomers are, are redefining what it means to be. Look at the Rolling Stones. They're redefining yeah. what it means to be old yeah because they're old there's no yeah. there's no right, for a while right. there i used to get so sick and tired of baby boomers saying oh i'm not old yet i'm not old yet and i think oh you know when do you get to be old when, you know because eventually you're old you yeah. know just you, <laughs> yeah. you give it up you're old so the rolling stones they're old and yeah. they're redefined and old doesn't have to be a bad thing yeah but admit that you are mm-hmm. and that it can be awesome and it's right. wonderful the way that they're doing it they they're still passionate they're still so what is old now like, I think old is just old an is a opinion. state of mind. It's a state of mind, yeah. and it's an opinion. Because you know, I always joke with you guys about my grandmother, and who's ninety eight. God love her. Hope she lives yeah. another day. And her attitude is, aging is not for the faint of heart. So it's really all in how you deal with those things that are hitting you as you age: the aches, yeah. the pains, the the diseases that might hit you. Mm-hmm. The you know different choices. You know. And yeah. I think it's it's being around young people. Yeah, exactly. I think it, yeah. it's really important to be around young people, to be around uh, uh, people that are learning, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Have multi-generational yeah. friendships. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely, you know, that concept of being around people, being in a community, um, yeah. and I think keeping moving, too. I mean, yeah, right. Because I have friends that are my age that, my God, they look 30 years older. I think they went into the recliner at 38, <laughs> you know? Right. And, uh, you know. Eating a lot of microwave food. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That yeah. can't be good for you. No. It just no. can't. No. 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 When was Ob- uh, President Obama born? Was it 65? Probably. So he just He's missed just, it. He just missed he just it. Yeah, missed he it. just missed it. Yeah. Oh, well. I thought he was a baby boomer. That's... No, he's a Gen X. Okay. Me too. Hmm. Well. Yeah, because the cutoff is 64. Okay. We just won't include him in our group then. That's right. Good talk, you guys. I can't yeah. believe Bill Clinton is a baby boomer. He just acts so immature. <laughs> he does. A president that <laughs> But would, in a good way. He would go out know? running from McDonald's to McDonald's you getting know? french fries with the Secret Service. You right. gotta love I didn't that. inhale. Really. <laughs> and now he's, now yes, he's, a, now he's a I vegan know. because he had, because, you know, he was dying of heart disease. You just gotta right. love that in a president. It's, yeah. Good for him. You gotta reassess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. When we come back, we're gonna talk about uh, Hillary and student loans. Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Karen J., what era would you want to have been born in and why? Ooh, I think the Roaring Twenties would have been fun. I do. I like that. Um, so, women got the right, right to vote, the flappers, the pearls. Everything was very prosperous then. Yeah. I think it would be interesting. Mm. Prosperous until the, the depression. depression yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. But it I mean, was I just lively. Would, I'd like to go there just for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> Until things go shit and <laughs> then leave. <laughs> Time travel. <laughs> Back to the future. Yeah. yeah. Suzanne? I don't know. I've seen color TV. I've listened in on party lines, the iPhone, Donald Trump running for president. I think I've been born in the right era all along. <laughs> I like it. Boston, how about you? Okay, I like this era. However, I've often fantasized about that cartoon show, The Jetsons, and I'd like to be in the future and have one of those little things, you know, like a, a, a just a, your own little personal airplane flying in the <laughs> air. Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. So I'd maybe with The Jetsons in the future. 
Colleen? I would like to have been born in the 30s and then coming of age. Uh, like, I, I think I would like to be born in 1935. And, yeah, and... That's like kind of that Mad Men era. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sort of coming of age oh, sure. right when that was happening. Yeah. I think I would have done well. I think I would have done very well. Hmm. I always fantasize about being Joan from yes. Mad Men. Joan was my favorite. Mm -hmm. Even though her storyline got really frustrating after a while. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Hillary and student loans. Boston. You wanted to talk about this. Hillary wants to make uh, student loans forgivable. Is this true? No. Um, I, I think she just has a $350 billion plan to kill the college debt. And oh. I, 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 I think she's got two plans. She's hoping to burn the college debt off. But that plan is kind of, as you, re as you read through the stuff that she's saying, it's mostly how going ahead, how to prevent it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what concerns me, the reason I wanted to discuss this again is, I think every candidate should have some kind of plan or idea as to deal with this problem. Because I see it as such an issue um, for, for kids today. And, um, you know, you're talking millennials. You, you've still got Gen Xers paying off college debt. Hell yeah. You know, and you still have baby boomers. Yeah, and what's, that's, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, I thought Obama came up with something to help forgive loans for some people. That was in community colleges, though, right? For the oh, right. Yeah, okay. it was community to, college. To yeah. give them a start at a community college right. rather than go to a four-year and pay okay. out normal, you know, outrageous prices that you have to go. To That's right. Yep. Yeah, and I think um, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a few sentences here that would... Um, in encapsulate her, what she wants to do. But it's so detailed. This is her thing. She's, she's, she's got to pick a thing, and uh, she's got to appeal to... The millennials and all the millennials are freaking out about their student loans sure. right now because they're they won't be able to start their lives. Their yeah. their lives have been their lives as adults have been jerry rigged right. by this uh, this horrible horrible system. They, they they're they're starting out in debt. Yeah. Will they be able to buy a house? I think no. You know. Or when everybody dies, there's going to be all those empty McMansions out in the suburbs. There's right. going to be so many houses. Yeah. And not enough people to buy them. So they're going to have to figure out something. Right. right? Now, and, and basically what she's saying is she walks the fine line between having debt-free college and free tuition proposals. And she's working with um, Martin O'Malley and Bernie Sanders. And this is something that started before we got into the heat of the presidential stuff. Right. So, you know, I don't have a lot of details on Germany this. does it. Yeah, France has free. France has free right. college, right? Yeah, and, and so so does England. Um, pieces of their college program are free. Yeah, and I and we also hear a lot about um, it's becoming a trend right now in America to go to college in Canada because their college tuition is so much better. You can go to a Canadian college for far less than you can the University of Minnesota. Oh. Yeah, so, one of my daughter's friends went to Canada. Yeah, for that reason, it's it's like okay, well, you know, we really need to this look is at this shameful. problem. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is because it shouldn't be that expensive. It's horrible. As an educator at a university, mm -hmm. how do you feel about it? I mean, I know you just said it's horrible, but like, I what what's your perspective? And is there anything that you feel that can be done? I mean, obviously, this is a good start, but do you see it actually happening and coming to fruition? Do you see, because it's such big business, it really is. Universities are that's such big business. Yeah, that's and it's, what's happened. It's going to be so hard for them to turn that away. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, they, you know, and as big businesses, they don't see, uh, they don't see students as students. They see as students as clients yeah. <laughs> and line. customers yeah, and customers and, and customers and um no it's it's a horrible thing it's a horrible thing it's become a real big business and it's not the teachers no, that are getting the money no it's um it's just really heavy duty on administration unbelievable layers of administration in higher Boards ed and different and people that collecting yeah. you know just where that's where all the money unbelievable goes. Unbelievable. I would love to see what salaries go to some of the heads of these schools and what they really do. 
you know, for the yeah. students versus like you right. as an educator, right. how you help them out daily Look compared to just like yeah. some board just member who sits there and says, this is what I think these students to do. And this yeah. is what I think the teachers need to do. And this is, I mean, I just witnessed this at my school where I'm at, at Sanford Brown. It's a very small radio school right. and they're closing it down because a corporation bought it and they had a whole bunch of administrators that tried to change the way the school was run and how the students should do it. And it really ruined the platform of the education right. and now it's being closed because of a bunch of people that had no idea what was going on exactly and that's what's happened it's, you know that's it's just at a small it, level. people people that are running uh higher ed and and even public ed have no idea what they're doing because they're not their their backgrounds aren't in education it's in finance <laughs> how to run a business <laughs> yeah. not teach someone how to run a business yeah it's very sad very sad well, it, it seems to um, the, the the situation seems to be mirroring our own government with the right. layers of garbage Absolutely. that we're going through. Yeah. Yes. And it's um, you know, it just it's so it it just it makes me so mad. You the know? center yeah. won't hold. I mean, eventually something's going to have to give. Yes, yeah. and eventually people will uh, realize that um, the dumber. Here, here's, I'm going to say something really profound here, and it's going to sound really crazy stupid. The dumber, the stupider of us. The, the dumbest person. We're only as smart as the dumbest person in the room, right? Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. Right. <laughs> something no, like that. We get it. We got to have, we got to raise everybody up. Yeah. Otherwise, because we're all linked together. That's right. Yep. So if, if they make it difficult to improve yourself, um, right. this, is a, this is a bad trend. This is well, a really bad and, and trend. And the government's in on it, too. Right. I mean, in a big way. And it's it, financial you could say, aid. It, it, could, and, it could be. Yes. It, and you could say Huge. food, too. Yes. If, uh, you know, the, the people that are of a certain income level have access to the worst health care. They have right. the worst avail. They have the worst access to the worst food. Dollar menu, anyone? Yes. That's how they're getting their protein. Mm -hmm. Right. You're, and, and no vegetables. Right. And no health care. I mean, it's just, it seems... Uh, like Third a Charles world. Dixon Dick, Dickens type thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're getting oh, you're you're getting the master's the crumbs. It's right. only for the ones that can afford. Yes. You know, pretty soon that's what they're going to do with education. It's going to survival gonna, of the It's going to be right. like the you know and going the back to the old. Not even open at night. Yeah. Anymore, yeah. when people who are working could probably get there. Right. Yeah. Right? right. Scary, scary shit. It is scary. Well, yeah. I guess this is a good time to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, quick, have a happy thought. I, I think I'm going to go to McDonald's and get something off Some, the dollar menu. Off the maybe. dollar menu. Yeah. Yep. I'm actually going to do that on the way home. You are not. No, don't. I think I'll have the broccoli and cheese. Oh, no, wait a minute. They don't have it. Broccoli and cheese. Doesn't that sound good? Trees with cheese. That's what I called it when we were kids. It's trees with trees cheese. With I cheese. love it, yeah. There's a happy thought. Trees yeah, with cheese. Nice. Trees. Get yourself some that. trees with cheese. And a little bit of money. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> On the trees. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Tell your friends. See you next week.